giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First Updates Now, FTC is produced in partnership with the Orange Alliance. Now FTC is a platform to keep up to date on live and archive first tech challenge events and team stats at theorangealliance.org. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun at loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the 2019 Championship Recap. recap. Um, uh, we're going to start off today by recapping the Houston Championship. Um, then we're going to have a really quick crew change, uh, and then the Detroit recap will, uh, will happen after that. And after that, we're going to go into the FTC Top 25. You guys have voted, we've compiled it, and we are going to present it all to you. Uh, reporting for first updates now, FTC, I'm Shashir. I'm Chris. I'm a boss. And I'm Nick. We have a ton of absolutely awesome giveaways from Go Build It tonight. Um, we're going to be giving away a cascading kit, a linear actuator kit, the GoTo bundle, low channel bundle, and the brand new straight for chassis kit. Tyler, can you let our audience know how they can win these giveaways? Yeah, for all of our giveaways, just a reminder, uh, make sure you click that little follow button near the top of the screen to make sure you stay up to date on all First Updates Now content. Uh, we'll have a keyword, uh, as Shashir mentioned, that we'll be doing during the show, uh, multiple times during the show, and we'll run for a few minutes. Type in that keyword in the chat. And that's all you have to do to be entered. If you do choose to subscribe, help support First Updates Now, stay loud, live, and independent, you're going to get five times chance to win. And we thank everybody who has stepped up to the plate uh, to keep more fun content going, just like FTC recap, and just like Eric8417 did. Thank you so much. All right. Definitely. Thank you guys so much for keeping this program, uh, keeping this program going. So, um, when we, we're going to actually start, we're going to start off, um, we're going to start off by going into the best division. <laughs> of course, I say that because that's the division I was in, the Franklin division. Um, so after a long set of these uh, qualification matches, because, you know, as everyone knows, championships was expanded this year. Uh, it was, it was a grueling process, I'm not going to lie. So after these very, very long set of qualification matches, we saw a few of these teams rise to the top and make their way through the bracket. Um, we had some really, really heavy-hitting heavy names coming into this, um, with uh, including, uh, or should I say, like primarily, Abbas's old team, uh, 3101, the Boombots. Um, this team had a real beast of a bot and uh, put up some of the top scores of this region prior to champs. At the same time, we've seen actually the world record for a while come out of both 7105 Swift Robotic and 50. 64 aperture science um and both of these robots were in the franklin division coming into champ so um really really exciting stuff we were all <clears throat> sorry we were all looking for um for some very very high scores yeah so the first two days of qualifications went pretty smoothly with uh no real surprises occurring in the lineup uh, of match play but when friday came around that got really flipped on its head we saw several extremely close matches uh, such as in Q133, while uh, Rise of Hephaestus almost uh, upset the Boombots with a score of 405 to 413. And Team 12808 beat uh, 7105 in the nail-biting Q165. Uh, Chris, speaking of qualification 133, one thing I want to mention is that if 3101's partner hadn't scored those depot minerals, the match would have actually been a tie, which is really cool. Yeah, I mean, seriously, that shows, like, the real importance of every aspect of the scoring field. Mm -hmm. I think that's actually a bit of a uniqueness for this year compared to, like, previous years. Because, um, personally, I saw there were actually two instances just at Worlds. Uh, I'm sure you're going to cover this a bit later, but there, were, there was another instance, in, uh, in addition to this one, where those Depot Minerals made the match. Like, it was a make-or-break situation because these teams were just so skilled. Um, and so it really shows how... This game was really dynamic in the sense that every every set, every aspect of this game had an importance. Um, so these really insane matches, these matches that um, th these matches that were really close and caused and had, had a lot of uh, had a lot of impact. Um, it really came down to affect the alliance selection system. 
um, it, uh, leading, it led a lot of teams to scramble quite a bit to position themselves effectively. 3101, the Boombots, um, were able to clinch that first seed, being undefeated. Um, and being that first seed, they picked 50-64 after science. And 65-47, the Cobalt Colts, to round out their alliance. Um, this team and this alliance actually swept the entirety of the elimination bracket, um, going all the way to Minute Maid and uh, ending Minute Maid in just two matches. Um, and But that isn't to say that they had really easy opponents. Um, this match that's showing right now, finals match one, <laughs> had a score of 552 to 522. So we had some really, really insanely high-scoring matches coming out of here. But at the same time, this alliance was truly dominant in their field. So last year, we know it was Brainstormers who were able to, who did like the seemingly impossible task of uh, sweeping the entirety of the world championships. Um, but this year, 3101 showed that it's uh, it's something that's repeatable and it's it's something that's pretty cool to see. So what do you guys think about this uh, this Franklin division? Do you guys have any thoughts? Yeah, I thought, I mean, there was some great match play and 3101, I just checked the stats. They were actually the only team in both worlds to go completely undefeated 15-0-0. So that's, I mean, that's just amazing. That's right, because even the gluten-free alliance did lose, correct? One match? Yeah. Very impressive, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so in terms of, like, uh, gameplay, do you guys have any thoughts of the difference between Franklin and Jemison? Because one thing that I did notice was that Franklin had some... Both... Uh, I, I would like to, I'd like to say that both uh, both divisions had really, really strong teams. and um, But I think that the, the the uniqueness was in the way that the game was played here because um mm -hmm. we didn't have any into the we didn't have any like too many into the crater robots as right. was seen in the other in uh, Jemison. um mm -hmm. did you guys think that that played a different that made them play a different game and was there any kind of defensive strategy difference that you guys felt okay so um oh sorry yeah so um I think there was a lot more defending in Jamison uh, in the eliminations just because there were uh, robots like 11260 and, uh, uh, and even Hydra who can extend their arms out and just kind of block everybody as well. And I thought it was uh, quite different uh, actually in between the two divisions for sure. Yeah, I completely agree with Chris. Like in qualifications, Jemison definitely showed a lot more defense. But in uh, finals and playoffs, I think a couple of teams really stood out in Franklin, including uh, Overcharged. Uh, and they Absolutely. played some good defense on 31 mm one -hmm. Yeah, I didn't I didn't see very much of Franklin, but um from what I did see on Jemison, the like the peak scores were a little bit lower because there was such a healthy defense. Like, there were a lot of teams that I saw especially going for, rather than, like, the absolute I'm-going-to-get-in-your-way defense, they were really going, okay, well, I'm going to make you take a longer route so that you actually have to spend more time and increase your cycle time as a defensive Absolutely. strategy, which mm -hmm. I thought was a cool way to approach it. Absolutely. For me, I also noticed that one thing in terms of the way that Franklin was played as opposed to um, as opposed to Jemison is Frank uh, Jemison had a lot of the bots. Of course, we're going to get a little more in-depth about some of these robots, really cool stuff uh, a bit later in, uh, in the show. But I noticed that Jemison had robots that were able to stay in one place and do all the cycles from that one position. Franklin didn't really have that. Franklin, like, as we can see, even the most dominant robot in this match, like Boombots, they drove right. their robot from the crater to the lander from the crater. And so did Swift. Um, so did Aperture, actually. Like, the three most dominant teams did that. The other good right. teams, like us and like our sister team, Overcharged and whatnot, we also had to drive. So I think that that was unique. Um, one of the things that I've always thought was that the less driving, the better. But as shown, teams that did drive, the teams that were still had to move their robot, were able to play this game really, really successfully. <clears throat> right. Yeah. So now uh, it's actually time to start the first giveaway of our night. Um, so we're going to uh, we're going to be giving away the GoTube bundle from GoBuilda. Um, so in order to win this, um, you guys, uh, please type GoTube. Uh, go to just one word in the chat to enter this giveaway. Um, remember that you need to be following the channel to, in order to win and that subscribers get a five times chance um, to win giveaways. All right, so do we want to um, do we want to actually transition into the Jemison division? Yeah, sure. So Jemison was definitely a strong division this year, and there were some really exciting matches. And during this uh, recap, I just wanted to have the highest scoring qualification match uh, playing in the background. So we saw really, uh, like, we saw really strong expected showing from teams, including Data Force, Redneck, MacBots, and Viperbots Hydra. 
And I think we all knew these teams were going to be really strong coming in. But a couple that I didn't really think about were Robo Avatars. Um, we saw, we knew about them as they were in the FTC Top 25. I just hadn't heard about them much else. And Nick, from what I understand, you're pretty, you're pretty close to them. So do you want to add anything on this? Yeah, I mean they're uh, one of the Northern California teams from just down the road, and they've always been. I know it's a hard region to advance out of in a lot of ways, but they've always been like one of those teams who's really, really iterating on their bot. Like, I've seen them evolve across the season quite a few times, but this year they managed to end up being the best pick in their division and pretty much sweeping the NorCal Championship. And they were, they iterated their robot significantly from that into more of what I guess you could call the gluten-free style of strategy. And mm -hmm. they had a really effective implementation of it. Oh, that's really interesting. Uh, another uh, team that we expected and was really strong is Upper Creek Robotics. And we knew that their defense was definitely going to make them a formidable bot. And we have a member from them today. Chris, you want to talk about you guys' gameplay? Yeah, so uh, my team in the beginning of the season really decided to play the game much differently than other teams. Uh, we knew there were going to be a lot of bots with a reaching intake that will be really well optimized, that we probably will be slower, but... Uh, our mm -hmm. thought process was that by having a robot that can go into the crater, uh, we can really disrupt the rhythms that some of these teams were building, and we can really slow them down. And so as you can see, we really uh, we designed a really efficient drivetrain that allowed us to uh, go into the crater without any trouble. And uh, with a really great crater side partner, we were able to offset a lot of the scoring by passively defending. And this design choice definitely helped us a lot. Uh, on getting picked because I think some of the teams recognized that we were a formidable force when it comes to slowing other people down uh, while keeping a really good amount of cycles. And I always say to my team that if you can't beat them, you just got to slow them down so that others can <laughs> help you win. Yeah, That's a good strategy. But we actually had a couple of robots that really took unique approaches that we wanted to talk about. So the first one of these is uh, Team Iron Rain. 6832. So they built their robot rather than like the traditional drivetrain. They had two large wheels on one side, and then they actually had a basically arm that has two omni wheels on the bottom, as you can see in this match video right here. And they were able to prop their robot up so that they have like a triangular shape, and then they flip it down into the crater as they're actually trying to pick up those minerals which allowed them to be quick, but it was a very, very unusual approach that they really just killed it. Um, yeah. And the other one was uh, Team Titanium Tech, 7357. Uh, they went another very different route. They have um, this bright green, very well-branded robot that has a round tube on the front that they just drop down onto a silver, pick it up, drop it down onto a second one, and then flip it over and score which meant that they were very, very, very efficient, but optimized so that they could only actually grab silver. I don't know that I ever saw them score a gold, and if they did, it probably was in the depot. But that was yet another, like, they took a bold and different strategy, and they really, really executed well, which, mad props to them. Absolutely. Um, I wanted to talk about Aaron Rain, actually. I, uh, they had amazing programmers, and I was talking to them, like, right at, right before awards, and they actually just built, uh, they made the robot self-balance and, like, standing up, just, like, in 15 minutes between awards and, like, the finals matches, and so I thought I thought that was really cool. Ooh. Wow, these guys, that, that's pretty insane. I think, I always like seeing this out-of-the-box style of play or style of, uh, right. style of design, because it enables, I don't know, it, it shows a different aspect, because it... it um, this year, I think, was great for that deviation from the meta, and I think that these guys right. really took that, took that to another level. Yeah, Yeah, but having these unique robots, uh, to me, it was very interesting to watch. Like, he kind of spiced the game up because, you know, with mm -hmm. all the reaching intakes, it's really uh, cool to see a lot of the new approaches teams were taking, and it mm -hmm. was wonderful, for sure. Absolutely. 
um, I know someone had a comment in the chat about driving while transferring. And I think I was thinking about that a little bit this season, considering our robot uh, had one of the, those uh, similar design to that. And my my take on it is that gluten-free and crack and pinion and teams like that were just so efficient that trying to learn that and work that into their cycle time would just, it just wouldn't be effective enough. Like, I don't know how many minerals they would gain in their overall results or how much they would decrease their cycle time for it to actually make a difference. I don't know what you guys, have you guys thought about this? I actually, I, I completely agree with that. So they're all, they're obviously uh, while in theory, like I totally agree with that comment in the sense mm -hmm. that there will be a certain amount of time. It's possible that that time can be, can be made mechanically so minuscule that it doesn't matter. Um, so I think that like, while, while it is true, um, in terms of like, in terms of the match itself, in terms of real gameplay, um, it doesn't really matter too much. Um, so do you guys want, do you want to discuss some of the, um, some of the alliances, um, some of the captains and whatnot for Jemison? Yeah, so let's talk about the alliances for Jemison. Uh, we had an upset with the second seed captain uh, by MacBot P, uh, beating Data Force, the first seed alliance. And our final alliances uh, of Jemison included uh, MacBots, Redneck, and my team, Upper Creek, uh, against Data Force, Viperbots, Hydra, and Bias of KitKats. And this was really intense uh, three matches actually in the finals. And uh, we should talk about a lot of the fanning that was going on. Uh, during these finals. Yeah, before mm -hmm. we do that, can I, I just want to take a look at these robots themselves. Like, so we noticed two very distinct styles. So um, throughout the season, we've seen 69, 29 data force really be so dominant. Um, they actually have iterated, uh, they've iterated quite a bit. Um, Chris, you should be pretty familiar with this because your team and them, like both from Colorado, you both worked together. Um, but these guys initially had like a set of vertical slides um, and they had made that robot pretty cool, pretty efficient. Like it was really interesting to see, um, especially during some, some of the videos that were um, published earlier this season. Not too many though, because it was it was pretty hard to find. Um, but sort of after that, they really iterated and they iterated so effectively to the diagonal slide system. Uh, mm -hmm. And really seeing that robot reveal that they put out and seeing the way that they played was very interesting. And as we can see, 11089 bytes of Kit Kats, it's a pretty similar design type. It's basically the double slide, one slide feeds into a diagonal intake. Um, so with this alliance, you have basically two of these, um, you have, you have basically two of the same, uh, what's it called? Uh, two of the same type of bot. And you also come with team 7161, who was a beast on the defensive side. Um, yeah. but at the, and on, but on the blue alliance on uh, your, your alliance, Chris, we had so many different robot types. You had redneck robotics with the vertical arm that moved up and down. We had your robot with the uh, in like driving in and out of this crater, and we had uh, MacBots with the diagonal intake slides and a vertical deposit slide, which is sort of the opposite of what some people have seen. So, um, what do you guys? Well, yeah. So definitely, I would love to talk about uh, some of the defensive and some of the aspects that allowed your alliance to mesh so well. Um. Yeah. So I really thought. Um... The 724 was a really uh, interesting design. Actually, in the beginning of the season, they really didn't have that design. Uh, it mm -hmm. kind of changed throughout the season. And MacBots, they've always been uh, one of the most dominant Texas teams I've seen throughout the season. Uh, and for us, coming out of Wyoming and Colorado, uh, it was it was great to compete with all the Utah teams uh, in Wyoming. And it was great to see 6929 evolve uh, throughout the season. Uh, actually, no miles from 6929. Um, he's one of their lead programmers, and uh, he's told me that they've had several iterations to their, um, to their even their uh, diagonal uh, slides. And uh, to me, just you know, coming from the first qualifier to uh, Wyoming State, we re they really improved their design for sure. And uh, on the other uh, alliance, I really thought Viperbots was a really great defensive bot uh, on top of their really high scoring ability uh, because they have a really tanky drivetrain. And the robot was really well designed, and it was really hard to move them out of the way. So their this defensive strategy was kind of different than ours. What we do is we get out of uh, get into people's way. But what Viperbots do is they kind of just push people lightly away, and it was very hard to move them uh, away if, for example, 724 was uh, going up against them. So they for sure had a uh, were a really uh, really desirable partner to have. 
Absolutely. Um, speaking of Hydra, I know Recharge Green in Houston, or in sorry, in Detroit, looks like they took a leaf out of their book when uh, playing defense. It seemed like whenever they were doing their cycles, they would always just shove their opponent just a little bit, and it affected them enough uh, in order to make a difference for some of their matches. So yeah, I think Viperbots' defense was like really effective and was adapted by other teams. Absolutely. So uh, I think it's time to uh, get on, get into that giveaway. So uh, Tyler, could you, um, would it be possible for you to read the winner of the giveaway once again? Yep, so it was GoTube, word, right? Uh, that's right. The keyword was GoTube, one word. All right. So winner of that is going to be, let's see here. Who do I want to pick? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Adam14875, <laughs> uh, congratulations. Winner once again. Uh, so lots of rigged emails in chat. Adam is a subscriber, so we have clearly rigged it for our subscribers to win. Uh, but nicely done. Uh, please make sure you still reach out to me uh, with that. And by the way, uh, C. McBride, thanks a lot, buddy, for the uh, 500 uh, bits of my Corsetto GP right there. Appreciate that, man. Nice. Um, so with that, we're actually going to start our second giveaway as well. Um, our second giveaway is going to be the Gobilda Cascading Kit. Um, the Gobilda Cascading Kit, um, and this the keyword for this one is Extendo. So um, be sure to put that in chat as well. Um, it's a really, really um, cool. It's it's quite uh, quite compact for the amount of extension it gives and the amount of flex, uh, the lack of flex, I guess, that it, it provides. So really cool stuff. Um, definitely put in Extendo is the keyword and uh, put that in chat. So. Um, Moving on, so that, those were the two divisions. So now we move on to Minute Maid. Um, I got to say, um, in terms of Minute Maid, from, from my experience, um, this was one of the rather... So uh, just, just a little bit of a clarification. So um, in, terms of the, in terms of the winners of the division, the number one seed on the Franklin division completely swept. So that's Boombots Alliance. And on the, on the second, uh, on the uh, fr uh, Jemison division... It was pretty interesting because initially um, it was the first match of the finals, the division finals, was supposed to be a tie. But it seems that the referees did not count some of the depot minerals, and that caused right, the right. Blue Alliance the second seed to win. So it shows once again that the depot minerals caused, um, like, caused the effect of the outcome of a match to change. Um, so. I just wanted to take a bit of a step back from that and ask you guys, what are your thoughts about that? What are your thoughts about the score of a match being changed after the fact? I mean, I think since like since they should have changed the score, it was like a completely valid decision. And like, I mean, they were correct in putting like the right score up there. Yeah, I think this is one of the growing pains of getting into live scoring. Like you have the element of things won't be counted perfectly. I know several years back when FRC went through a similar transition, they had some games that like needed manual accounting after the fact. So getting this here, like it's totally understandable, but I really hope they're able to make it a little bit simpler to get the live scoring accurate at the end of the match next year so that we're able to move past this because it does Absolutely. really hurt for the teams, I'm sure. It does. And uh, one thing to remember is that this uh, a similar situation happened last year where they said uh, in the second match, this was actually in Minute Maid, where the second match yeah. they said that um, 724's alliance had won, but then they said, oh, wait, no, uh, the other yeah. alliance worked, uh, won. Right. And I, I totally, 100% uh, understand where what you're saying, Nick, because it is a, it's a huge leap. Like, going into this live scoring is something that I feel is I amazing. Uh, but at the same time, of course, it'll take some time to, getting, to get used to it. Um, but just going, about, going into this recap, into um, Minute Maid, we really see a, a rather, I, in my opinion, uneventful um, match play. Um, all four of these teams were really, really focused on doing scoring their objectives. I didn't see the same amount of defense right. being played as it was being played in divisions and division finals. Um, I just saw four really good robots doing what their really ro good robots are really good at doing, which is playing mm -hmm. this game pretty well. No, I definitely agree. And I know there's like, I know MacBots wasn't able to play fully. Like they they had something going on with their police. Chris, could you elaborate on that? Yeah, so um, right before finals in Jermison, um, uh, we were uh, my team was notified that they had some troubles on their pulley, uh, mm -hmm. pulley things, and I wasn't sure exactly what the problem was, but it seemed pretty severe. Um, but so so that's why uh, my team and 724 played the both matches, and uh, they were not playing uh, during those finals. But uh, but we won by a penalty uh, in the finals, and we were able to move on to Minimade. So this gave them a lot of time to fix the robot, and they were able to pull through and 
uh, put on a really good show. Wow. So things really did work out. It was, uh, that was pretty down to the wire then. So very, very cool stuff. So in your guys' opinion, I just wanted to ask, like, how, how was Houston champs? Like, how was your overall experience? Did you guys have any issues or did it, did it go pretty smoothly for y'all? Uh, before and we this, get actually, to I want to open shit. this. I want. Oh, sorry. Yeah, what's up? Yeah, uh, someone in the chat. I think from Macbot, they said their collection screw bro- broke, so they couldn't move it at all. And I mean, I guess like that seems to be like a pretty big deal. So yeah. Oh yeah. I guess, yeah. Yeah. It's definitely a big deal. I think uh, I was. Uh, so so sorry. I was I was looking at actually I was looking at their uh, their um, slides in the uh, after after the finals, and I think it it was like a really really cool fix they did. Uh, before it's just that collection screw for sure. Um. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. But yeah, Shashir, as you were saying about the uh, champs, I think I think the um, like the presentation of it all was like really really well done this year, and it was just like I, it was like a really really good experience. Um, I know like the smoke machines that was cool. <laughs> that uh, definitely that was... was cool. Um, for <laughs> those of you who may not know what we're talking about, um, I, I, during for uh, division finals. All of the teams who were who made it to the division finals had to, like ran through a, a smoke machine. It was pretty epic. It looked like it, it was it was a nice production quality sort of thing that um, I think elevated the experience for teams. Um, and I also drop this in the I, I want to drop this in the chat. We don't have that much time, but what do you guys think about this year's chance? What did you guys think? Uh, did it go well for you guys? Were there any issues? How did how how was it? And uh, open to you guys. Uh, open to Nick and Chris as well. So. So for me, the um, the experience was really great, uh, and actually, I really loved the show where the um, uh, the people were the waving the flags. The um, I forgot the oh, exact yeah. name, but yeah, but that was really cool experience. Uh, I didn't get time to film the whole thing and make it into the video, uh, the recap video, but uh, honestly, I thought it was even a better represent uh, presentation than the uh, than the FRC stuff actually. Um, and yeah, the smoke machine, that was wonderful. That's the first time I've seen it. And I hope that continues again next year. Uh, and overall experience, I think it was great. Uh, they moved the location of, uh, of the pits in the competition field this year. And mm-hmm. I felt like it was, yeah. it was a great location because we had more space. And last year, uh, we were able to uh, expand on the team number as well, 160 teams this year. Uh, so yeah, I think it was a great experience for me. Yeah, I want to echo that. I think the space was vastly better than last year. I know it was because the venue was taking some people in from the disasters that had happened, but I thought it was much, much better this year. And it was nice that like it was actually kind of roomy and spread out. Right. But the extra number of teams did make it, at least to me, it felt like a very, uh, very, very quick paced event Absolutely. compared to the last couple of years. It was. Mm-hmm. I know that. I know that these. Um, I, I want to give a huge kudos to like everyone who was involved, including you, Nick, for um, in running these uh, this event. Because I'm sure with 160 teams this year, it was a massive logistics kind of um, dilemma and whatnot. So um, right. I think that first really ran this program well. A lot of the um, a lot of the issues that we had last year were 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 pretty much fixed. Like I, I liked uh, a lot of this. The one thing that one qualm I still sort of had was the video. A lot of the um, a lot of the stream is dedicated to people's hands, Definitely. like in people's faces. Um, and, and it's like just the phone sort of, starting and all of that stuff. Yeah, the phone starting. So that's like just a little bit of a thing for me, but I really, really enjoyed Champs this year. Um, it would have been really nice, by the way, if they could have gotten the overlays to work on both of the finals matches, which both oh, yeah. were delayed for half the match. <laughs> and the first one actually showed the FRC overlay in the first match. So. Right. Yeah, uh, right. still a lot of work to be done. I think at Minute Maid with the AV crew on both FRC and FTC. Absolutely, to- I to- I totally agree with that. Like, um, they we had issues last year, we had issues this year, but I think they're gonna they're working through it. So hopefully, it's gonna get better as time goes on. All right, so it's uh, we're gonna actually be ending our second giveaway today. Um, so before we end uh, the Houston recap, we want to roll for the winner of this second giveaway, Tyler. All right, we'll go ahead and roll for that. Once again, that was for a cascading kit from our friends over at GoBuilda. Make sure you go check them out at GoBuilda.com. Uh, the winner for this one is going to be uh, Yankees One Fan 2002. Uh, congratulations, <laughs> you have one who is yep also a subscriber as well. So you know what that means. Lots of rigged emotes uh, for the cascading uh, kit. So thanks again to GoBuilda, by the way, for all their awesome giveaways. We got a few more Absolutely. to do uh, for the rest of the night. 
Absolutely. So thank you guys so much for all the follows and subscriptions we've received today. Um, don't forget you can subscribe from free for free if you or your parents have Amazon Prime. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this episode of FTC Recap. Um, if you want to stay connected with uh, what Fun FTC FTC Live is doing, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Fun FTC, and join our Discord through the link in the chat. So um, on behalf of myself, Abbas, Nick, Chris, and our producer, Tyler, working behind the scenes, I'd like to thank you all for tuning in. Um, so make sure to stick around for a few things. So um, in about 10 minutes or, or in about five or so minutes, we're going to be having the Detroit recap starting. Um, but while we go, um, we're going to be, um, for this transition, we've got two videos for you to check out. The first one is... Uh, a video made actually by Chris, um, the not yet released Houston recap video from Team 11260 up at Creek Robotics. So really, really cool stuff there. Again, not been released. You're going to see it here first. Um, the other video is going to be a Behind the Bot with Team 8417, The Electric Legend. So uh, thank you guys so much, and uh, we'll see you next time. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.